So a good and um, way to build form is to use uh, a base structure like a bowl, um, preferably made out of ceramic material. If it's <clears throat> if it's made out of um, Pyrex, that's okay too. If it's made out of plastic, mm, I'm a little bit on the fence about that, but we'll see. Um, because part of the drying process involves putting this along with the bowl in the oven. Um, maybe if you air dry it enough, um, you could take it out of a plastic bowl and put it in the oven without the the plastic structure underneath. But I could just pop this whole thing with my um, salt dough in there into an oven and it'll be fine because we're only going to go up to 200 degrees with this. And it's used, the oven is used just to dry out our project um, in its different stages. So I am going to make my coils. I have a little, um, this is like a little soup bowl or a little rice bowl that I have. And I'm going to use uh, some plastic wrap so that I can remove it out of my bowl a little bit more easily. If you have parchment paper, that's fine too. Okay. So now that's covered. And I'm gonna roll this out. Without the plastic wrap, I'm afraid that it may stick to the bowl and not be easily removed without me chiseling and digging in there. And then that might damage um, the salt clay pottery piece I'm making. So once you get a coil rolled like this and it gets to be too long, cut it in half and just work with uh, the one half of it. And I'm thin thinning it out a little bit more. Now I'm going to create a little spiral. So I am coiling it and making a little spiral like this. Okay, it's gonna look like a little flat cinnamon bun or something. And there it is, I'm making a little coil. There it is, right there. Looks like it's a little flatter on the opposite side that was sitting on the on the mat. And I'm going to stick this right in my bowl. Soft dough is just, it's just so soft and stretchy that I need a support. So I'm going to use something that has the approximate shape of my uh, finished pottery and I'm kind of very gently, without squeezing too hard, pressing that in the middle of my bowl. And where my coil ends, I'm gonna overlap another coil and just build up. Take your finger and push down. Just like that. You see my indentations? To try to attach the new layer to the previous layer so that they make a connection, a better connection. Because sometimes even with real clay, if you don't uh, add a little bit of pressure or even uh, scratch up the surface that you're attaching onto and even use like a little bit of slip, which is what really wet clay, um, almost like a glue, the new layer of, of real clay doesn't even stick. It'll just fall right off. So you need to, create some sort of adhesion between the layers. Adhesion meaning, um, you know, uh, one layer sticking to the other. So I'm going to continue on with this little piece here that I have left and overlap it with the previous uh, layer just about by half an inch and then continue up the sides of the inside of my bowl. Um, I'm not putting it on the outside of my bowl, although I could because when I go to dry it, I'm afraid that my salt clay pot is going to shrink. But of course, this is not going to shrink. And if I started building on the outside of this, it might crack once my salt clay piece starts shrinking. So if it starts shrinking on the inside, it'll just pop off the walls and it's not going to crack. 
kind of pressing with my fingers. So I want you to have some fun with this. This is not something like a project that you should approach with um, trepidation, like, oh God, you know, it should be something that you look forward to, something that you're curious about doing. Just gonna roll out this piece here. Shoop. Want a pretzel? No, I'm just kidding. That's how they make the pretzels though. Um, baking soda is in pretzels. That's why pretzels have that distinct kind of taste. There's not much else in pretzels. That's why pretzels are not, you know, super expensive because they don't have a lot of fancy ingredients. Once again, use your finger and press the new coil layer um, onto the old coil layer to the to the edge of the previous layer and just go around and do that so that they connect and they stick together and kind of become a single piece. If your work area gets too crusty and there's like too um, many little pieces of clay and they're getting stuck in your coil, just take a wet rag or sponge and just wipe it down. I, I took this box from the post office <laughs> And these um, mailing boxes are free. Um, so I took a piece of um, cardboard box from the post office and I'm going to cut some strips. And I'm going to use good old duct tape to make this a little higher. And then I'm going to use that because without a support, um, this is just going to basically, if I build it up any higher than this bowl, it's just going to flop over. Okay, so I'm going to just basically continue up a little bit and then pop this in the oven, dry it out, take it out, and then build the other half of the top of my vase. Like that. And then I'm going to push and press this coil uh, up against the top edge of the previous coil. And I'm not really concerned about smoothing this out because that's all on the inside. And when I close up the top of my jar, no one's going to see that. I have my clay now stored in like a cookie, like a plastic cookie container uh, because it has a lid and um, I'm leaving the lid open a little bit because my dough is, it, it just, it's in a, a Ziploc bag. It just, I feel like it's kind of hard to, to keep on going in there and out. And also it was just getting, staying so moist in there. It was like doing too well of a job. And I need this to dry out a little bit. Add another, overlap my coils uh, where the new one will start. If you get a little thin spot where the coil is extra skinny, what you can do about that is to take an extra piece of, of um, salt clay and just thin it out a little bit and then just put it on. I'm sorry, but I'll let you go class though. All right, thank you very much. That is completely fine. Um, so everybody, I want you to get your salt clay ready at least this weekend and uh, do your research notes in your sketchbook. Make sure you put it, if you do it electronically, that's fine. Just put it in your Google Drive and then I will have this assignment up so that you can attach your notes and your, your uh, sketches or your, your pictures uh, onto the assignment. But you gotta do this first in order to figure out what you're going to do. Um, have a good weekend. You too. So, um, Gazala, you said you don't have the clay. This is not clay. This is flour, water, and salt. So I, I hope that you can get that from the supermarket or you have that already in your house because I chose really easy to find ingredients that you may already have in your kitchen. So all you need is regular 
just cheap table salt, nothing special, and just regular flour, regular flour, uh, and water to make this. The recipe is in the Google Classroom. I put the posted the recipe there, and watch the video on how to make that. Okay. I'm just kind of making this top, my very top edge a little bit thicker because um, I'm going to build my uh, vessel, my piece of salto pottery in two halves. And I want there to be kind of like a thicker rim around so that I have enough surface area to glue this part onto the other a uh, half or the other, I should say, this is more than a half. This is about about 70% of the vase. So the other 30% I'm going to make is just going to be another um, coil pot built inside of the lower part of just the bowl inside here without the cardboard. And then I'm going to leave a hole at the top and just place that upside down on top of this and glue it to create my um, to create my coil pot. So having this like wall to support my salt clay is really making a huge difference than just building um, coils right on top of one another. Without that support, this really um, soft, mushy salt clay just collapses and it hasn't been working very well. I'm not able to go beyond a certain height. So this is definitely working, having some sort of little support here to build your coil pot inside of. So I'm just kind of making sure my, my new layers are um, connecting with my old layers that I previously made uh, during this morning's uh, classes. I'm just kind of evening it out and just feeling with my hands on the outside and on the inside, just kind of feeling the thickness of the wall of clay and just rotating it to press down evenly all the way around to try to even that out. But you definitely, when you're making a coil pot, you have to really use this kind of like rotation to even it out. Um, to whether to build the pot um, or whether to just even it, it out later on if you can't apply the coils like, like the, the lady in the um, video, the uh, Nigerian potter lady. So, actually, I, I haven't tried her method of building, holding the coil in one hand and kind of pressing it and adding. So, I'd be curious to try that with my, the next half of my pot. I'm kind of evening, I've evened out the top a little bit and I've flattened it out so it's a little easier to apply glue. And I'm going to let that dry uh, in the oven. I'm covering up my salt clay and I'm done for the day and I'm going to just pop this in the oven at around 200, uh, I think I'm going to put it on like 200 and uh, maybe about 225, anywhere from uh, 200 to 250 degrees Fahrenheit is fine for trying to dry out your clay, your salt clay in the oven. And when the salt clay is completely dry, it's actually very beautiful. You can see the salt crystals and they're kind of sparkly, like almost like glitter, like there's glitter inside your dough. Yeah, having a support is definitely a good thing. And I'm gonna just pop this in the oven now.
uh, the bottom rack. Cast iron pots in there because they're cast iron, it doesn't matter. And it's, I'm gonna bake it. Lower the temperature to about 220. Let's do 220 or 225. And then that's it. And when I'm done, I, I press cancel mine of my oven, but your oven might be a little bit different, the controls. So I'm going to let that go for about three hours. It's actually 640, so around uh, 940 I can stop it, or 10 o'clock, doesn't matter. Have a good day, everyone, and a nice weekend.